What's happening, everybody? Thank you for being with us here today on Cinema Recap. So, we're going to go ahead and look at the changeup. Enjoy yourselves with the spoilers ahead. We start this story with Dave, all cozy in bed. A baby's voice is crying through that baby monitor resting on the bedside table. The baby begins to cry some more. Dave's wife, named Jamie, casually tells him it's his turn. And Dave drags himself out of bed. Looking exhausted, slowly standing and plodding out of the bedroom. He enters the baby's room, where there's not one, but two little ones. Dave tries to change the crying child, but gets talcum powder in his face, and stuff falls everywhere, making a mess. Dave puts one child to bed, then turns around and sees the other one violently banging his head on the bars of the crib. Buddy, we talked about the head thing. Struggling with both children, Dave eventually gets both of their bottles and feeds them on the sofa watching TV as he does so. He gets to work, exhausted, seemingly asleep on his feet until the elevator doors open. He steps out and walks across a beautiful marble floor, smartly dressed and carrying a briefcase. He talks some work stuff with colleagues, is handed some papers, and he goes to his desk. Immediately, the phone begins to ring. Dave answers it, and the other guy on the line is Mitch. He's blurting out obscenities, mainly body parts. They don't need to be repeated. Did I get you? Yeah, you sure did. You have me on speakerphone? Yeah. Mitch asking smugly if he was on speakerphone. And if the secretary heard. She did. Wait, is that a bong in the background? Mitch said he's taking some of the green stuff. Then he goes on to say what he did last night, fighting some homeless guy for a futon. Dave tells him that he's busy, and Mitch replies that he misses him, saying that they haven't seen each other in ages. They agree to meet up later in the day, and Dave hangs up. Mitch's dad has come to visit him telling him how proud he is of his son. Mitch asks if he's being sarcastic, and his dad replies that dropping out of high school to be an actor was a great decision. He then goes on to praise Mitch's appearance in a meat commercial, something about bologna. Mitch asks why he's here, and his dad just wants to know if he wants to have some breakfast. Mitch says he can't because he has an important conference call soon, and by that he means he's gaming with some pals. So, his dad tells him what he was going to tell him now instead. He's getting married and wants to know if Mitch will come to the wedding. Mitch tells his dad that he'll catch the next one. How many times has this guy been married? His dad leaves disappointed and nothing more is said. That night, Dave is bathing the children while his slightly older daughter named Kara talks about butterflies. Jamie enters, talking about the bad day she's had and asks Dave if he's ready for dialogue night. He tells her he completely forgot about it again. It's been three months. He says he can't do it tonight because he promised Mitch that he would watch the game with him. The doorbell suddenly rings. Jamie opens it with a smile, telling Mitch how great his hair looks. Mitch follows Jamie into the kitchen, helping himself to some baby food. Jamie's asking him if he's dating anyone. Mitch says no, and Dave comes downstairs with the two babies cleaned and in their PJs. Mitch says how cute the babies are, before asking one of them, I guess he chose randomly what their name is. Why can't they talk yet? Are they retarded or something? Mitch and Dave head out to see the game. And as they're driving, Mitch tells Dave how he auditioned for a movie and got it. Dave asks him the name of the movie. Mitch then lights up a smoke while Dave holds the steering wheel for him. He offers Dave the smoke. Dave throws it out the window. Mitch casually lights up another one, taking his hands off the wheel again. My man's a clown. They reach the bar without crashing and watch the game. The two of them cheer at the strikeout, both taking another drink and celebrating. They talk a bit and Dave asks Mitch what's going on with the women. Mitch mentions a woman called Tatiana, but can't remember her last name. Dave makes a comment that it reminds him a bit of Sabrina. Mitch asks with great interest who Sabrina is. Dave explains she's a new law associate at his work, and she's so hot. They go back to talking about Tatiana. Apparently, she doesn't talk very much. She's more of the physical type. Mitch says they do every position under the sun, including one called the Arabian Goggles. Well, I don't even know what these are. Mitch goes into more detail about Tatiana, and Dave says that he misses the fun and bad choices, saying how he rushed things. Rushing to get into a good college, a good law school, getting married and having children. He says that he just threw away his 20s, and now it's too late. But later, Mitch says to Dave that he's got it made, saying that he's got a hot wife, a beautiful house, full of nice stuff and food, his children, his money, and that he's surrounded by people who care about him. But Dave says that he wants something different. He wants Mitch's life. He wants to have fun with strange new women. 
saying that Mitch is living the dream, working one week a year as an actor. Dave says he's always stressed and just wants to relax. He then realizes he has to go pee, so they both run over to the fountain to do their business, watched by this statue of a woman who looks totally unimpressed. This chick does not look happy. Mitch then says he envies Dave's life. Dave says he envies Mitch's life. They both say it in unison. And all the lights go out around him, all of them, just for a moment before coming back on, and the two continue to pee. They return to the car, and the statue is now smiling. The next morning, Mitch wakes up in not his bed, demanding his bong and asking who the crying babies belong to. Mitch, now in Dave's body, turns over to see Jamie breastfeeding one of them. Put those away, this isn't Africa. Jamie's asking if he's still drunk. Mitch then sees his reflection and realizes that he is now Dave. Elsewhere, Dave wakes up in Mitch's bed, in Mitch's body. Feeling incredibly tired as he usually does, he walks into the blinds, abruptly noticing the layout of his surroundings are different. He's asking himself why he's in Mitch's apartment. Then he goes over to the door to answer whoever's banging outside. He opens the door, only to find himself. What the hell is this? Then they start to touch each other weirdly, as they come to terms with whatever's going on. Dave in Mitch's body then begins to choke himself. I mean, Mitch, believing he's dreaming. He eventually lets go and goes to look in the mirror, as Mitch did before. Then they realize that they did wish for each other's lives while they were pissing at the fountain last night. They head back to that fountain, Dave driving erratically and weaving in and out of traffic. They pull up and run out of the car, only to find the fountain's gone. Now there's just a hole, a lot of dirt, a digger, and lots of men in high-vis. Mitch demands where the fountain is from the guy who looks like he's in charge. He's holding a book and a walkie-talkie. The man says the fountain's being restored and that he doesn't know where it is. Mitch and Dave try to find this missing fountain, driving to ask the district manager. More driving, tire screeching, convenient parking, and the two run full speed into that building, only to wait in a really long queue. When they finally get to that front of the queue, they fail to get any answers from this bored-looking woman behind the computer. She doesn't know. The computer doesn't know. And Victor, the guy who can find stuff, well, he'll be back tomorrow. They leave frustrated. Dave says he has a super important meeting today. Mitch says that he's starring in his first big role today in that movie. They're both in trouble. Mitch says that he can help Dave, saying he's an actor, a human chameleon. Dave says it's not such a good idea. I object! Oh my god. With no other options, each decides to take on the other's role. Mitch in the important meeting, Dave acting in the movie. Dave strongly instructs Mitch to say nothing in the meeting. Not a single word. Only to silently hand over some documents. That's it. Oh, and not to forget to pick up Kara after her ballet lesson at four. Mitch then instructs Dave on what to do. Learn his lines for the role. They give each other a quick hug, saying they'll respect each other's lives and part ways. Mitch gets into Dave's car, and Dave walks to Mitch's apartment to find those lines. Mitch, acting as Dave, gets out of the lift, wearing unmatched clothes. Colleagues immediately notice something's off, but Mitch just plays it off. Mitch as Dave walks into the meeting, late, with a mouthful of crisps. The room is filled with old and serious looking men, one of which looks Mitch Dave up and down, judging his clothes probably. Mitch sits at the table and the meeting begins. One of the men talk lawyer meeting stuff while Mitch obviously and loudly plays with his chair smooth. Mitch then asks a question about something and gives an incredibly vague answer, saying it's good, saying it's bad. He's asked more specific questions that he can't answer. Mitch gets confused and starts to swear casually, saying someone else should answer the questions. The two sides of the table begin to argue before everyone gets mad and storms out. Mitch is then told how critical this deal is for the survival of the firm. He manages to lie his way out of that situation, saying how he knows what he's doing and that it's all part of his plan. Elsewhere, Dave as Mitch arrives at that movie lot or whatever and starts trying to act like Mitch, randomly swearing and stuff before getting his hair and makeup done. He's then led towards where the cameras are going to start filming, asking what kind of film this is. Apparently, it's a Lorno. It's like a light porno movie. Dave is Mitch, is then led to a bed surrounded by a lot of candles, where another man orders him to be made more oily like a fish. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Davis Mitch is then handed a gun prop, shoved through a fake door, and told, action. It goes as well as you might expect. Put your thumb up nicely this butthole. Then Dimitri enters, a third guy, who begins to sensually touch Mitch Dave. Meanwhile, Mitch's Dave arrives at Kara's ballet class, seeing the children practicing on stage. Another girl pushes Kara over. Mitch sees this. The teacher didn't, thinking that Kara just fell. When Mitch drives Kara home, he's asking her about that girl that knocked her over, learning that she does that a lot. But Kara was always told to not fight back. Mitch tells Kara that she should always solve her problems with violence. That night, Dave and Mitch meet up, and Dave is horrified to learn that Mitch messed up that meeting, and that he, Dave, is now going to court. Dave freaks out, then asks Mitch what the hell's wrong with him. Mitch casually replies that it was only a Lorno, you know, a light porno. They both rush to Dave's home, where Dave, as Mitch, rushing in, plans on telling his wife the truth. Kara's there, and she rushes up to Mitch, who she thinks is her dad, and hugs him. Jamie then walks in and hands Mitch as Dave the two babies. They then sit on the sofa together and seriously tell Jamie they switched bodies. She doesn't take that seriously at all. Dave as Mitch tries again, sitting her down this time. Davey Mitch asks her when their anniversary is and gets it wrong. Ah, man. They try some more and fail. Jamie gets mad at him and storms out the room. Mitch, or Dave, then leaves to go home. I mean, to Mitch's home. They briefly talk about passionately hugging with Jamie. Dave laughs and then leaves. Dave goes back to Mitch's home, finding only disgusting and rotten food in the fridge. Meanwhile, Mitch's Dave eats a delicious meal made by Jamie. Kara's complaining about her poem not being chosen by her teacher to be put on the wall, and pushed by Jamie to comfort her. Mitch says, Your poem that I didn't read was better than that girl's poem, which I also didn't read. Jamie's mad, asking if Dave Mitch over here is having a stroke. Jamie then demands he sing the dinner song. Not knowing the words, Mitch improvises. The babies cry. Mitch is told he needs a timeout. He agrees and takes his plate, piled with food, plus the entire chicken, and leaves. Dave gets a call from Tatiana, who appears very suddenly knocking on that door. Dave calls Mitch terrified, saying that he can't cheat on Jamie. Mitch tries to reason with him, telling him it's not cheating for various reasons and that he has to just play the role. For Dave, for Mitch, for Tatiana. This is what you wanted, Dave. Sex with strange new women. You just thank me later and shut your mouth. It goes badly. Nothing happens and Tatiana leaves. Mitch's Dave has an equally bad time with Jamie. They get into an argument at like 3 in the morning about feeding the babies. She gets really mad, literally kicks him out of the bed, and Mitch calls Dave and asks him what to do. Dave in Mitch's apartment tells Mitch to take the babies to the kitchen, so Mitch does, lifting them like luggage, holding one upside down and putting them both on the kitchen counters. Still on the phone to Dave, Mitch listens to instructions or tries to. The babies are doing dangerous things. Mitch trying to control them. He puts them into the sink, demanding they find that fountain soon. Dave as Mitch tries, but it's going to take at least three days to three weeks. Dave as Mitch goes home to talk to Mitch, but finds Jamie upset. Jamie says that Dave Mitch has been acting really weird lately, and she's really upset. Jamie asks Dave Mitch if he, Mitch, who she thinks is Dave, is having an affair. Dave says it's not true, and they're just going through a rough patch. Jamie then pours her heart out, saying Dave works way too hard and has no time for her anymore. Mitch, as Dave, appears in the room butt naked. The two argue in the bathroom. Mitch agrees not to give up, and Dave teaches him how to be grown up. He teaches Mitch how to dress properly, teaches him about the schedule on the fridge, how to shop, how to parent, how to be early. They get to Dave's job where Mitch sets Dave, acting as Mitch, up with Sabrina. Dave agrees reluctantly and then leaves. Mitch then gets a call from his dad, thinking he's Dave, and agrees to meet up with him. His dad wants to talk about Mitch. So Mitch, acting as Dave, meets with Mitch's dad, who pours his heart out to Mitch as Dave, saying he wants Mitch to be a part of his life. Mitch leaves abruptly, angry that his dad called him a quitter. He then commits to his new role as dad, as husband, as Dave, and begins to succeed. And Dave as Mitch begins to enjoy his life as a single man, 
watching others grind at work and getting stressed while he relaxes, watches a movie, visits an aquarium, learns to cook, and appreciate himself. Mitch then teaches Dave how to dress before Dave as Mitch goes on a date. The date with Sabrina. Sabrina then admits she used to have a crush on Dave and that he's an amazing lawyer. They talk some more. Dave as Mitch orders like six desserts and they actually have a good time. Soon after, Dave as Mitch gets a call as he's rollerblading. The fountain has been found. Davey Mitch goes to tell Mitchy Dave and on the way meets Sabrina who offers him tickets to a baseball game. Dave and Mitch then get to talking, and Mitch says that he knows about the fountain being found. He got a call too. They both say how awesome the news is, but somehow seem disheartened. Mitch says that he wants to wait a day, because he's been working on something that's going to happen tomorrow. Dave agrees, saying, what is time? A day? A week? A month? They agree to keep things the way they are for now. Mitchy Dave forgets to meet Jamie at the coffee shop, and she goes home upset calling him briefly to ask if he forgot anything, but hanging up quickly. The next day, Davey Mitch enjoys the game with Sabrina, while Mitch as Dave closes the deal with the other company for 100 million more than they asked. Mitch celebrates outside that building with the other businessmen, and it begins to rain. That evening, Mitch as Dave gushes to Jamie about how happy he is, wondering if he'll get a medal or an engraved sword. He and his family attend a business dinner presentation. Mitch watches as Dave's achievements throughout school are presented. Mitch, however, begins to feel guilty, saying to himself that he didn't earn this. Dave, being straddled by Sabrina, notices the tattoo on her hip, a butterfly. He notices the specific breed of butterfly, as his daughters previously mentioned it, reading the name out from her book. Dave then realizes he wants to go home and so drives to the country club, leaving Sabrina behind. Mitch leaves as everyone begins to applaud him, saying this is not his life. Outside, Dave, the real Dave, rushes in through the pouring rain. He, Dave, the real Dave, rushes into the room, kissing Jamie, confusing everyone before he and Mitch as Dave run back outside to find the fountain. They leave everyone confused. Mitch and Dave drive to the address, only to find the fountain has been moved to a very public place with tons of people around. Dave is Mitch pees, but Mitch is Dave is shy and can't go with people watching. They start to argue while Dave is still peeing. Mitch asks Dave why he didn't invite him to his anniversary party. Dave stops peeing, asking if they can talk about it another time. Mitch insists that they talk about it now, asking if Dave is embarrassed of him. Dave says that he was, but not anymore. He says that he's proud of Mitch and they pee together. They both say it in unison. I wish I had my own life back! The lights go out, and by the time security reaches that fountain, Mitch and Dave are long gone. Everyone's confused. The lady of that fountain is smiling. And the next morning, Dave wakes as himself again, hearing that baby cry at 3 a.m. through that monitor. He goes to the mirror, relieved to see his own face. He kisses his wife, saying he owes her an explanation and an apology, all between kisses. Jamie sits up silently, really confused as Dave, now as Dave, the real Dave, says he's going to make things better, saying that he's going to quit his job for her. Jamie says that she doesn't want him to quit his job, saying she loves him and wants him to come home for dinner and dialogue night and to see the kids and to want to be here. They kiss again. The babies continue to cry and Dave says it's his turn, letting her rest in the bed. He tells her he loves her before he leaves and she tells him she loves him too. Dave goes to change the babies while Kara comes in to talk to him. She sits and tells him about school and how tiny atoms are. Mitch wakes up in his own bed, in his own body, and is equally thrilled. He rushes to the mirror, touching that gorgeous body, just glad to finally be back. Sabrina knocks on the door, telling him she forgot her purse, and Mitch invites her to breakfast. Later, he attends his dad's wedding, his dad's touched and thanks him, smiles all around. One month later, Jamie and Dave celebrate their anniversary. Mitch is invited. He makes a fun speech and says how sometimes life turns out better than they planned it. Mitch says that Dave belongs here with Jamie. They all drink to Dave and Jamie and Dave and Mitch hug and talk about how great things are, really smiling. Mitch says he and Sabrina are doing well. Dave says things are great at home and all's well that ends well.
Thanks for chilling with us, guys. That was The Change Up, released back in 2011. We love having you here, guys. As always, till next time.